Hey, welcome folks, it is Siberian, and in today's video, as you can see, I've got um, quite a bit of hardware on the desk in front of me, but I'm going to try and keep this video pretty simple. Basically, this video is about the Phantom Electric Supercharger. As you can see, this is the um, sort of the business end of the whole thing. Um, all it really is is basically a turbo that has been machined to also allow um, basically the receptacle for an electric motor. Now this is a BLDC motor, which means it's a brushless electric motor, not unlike something you'd see in a fairly high-end, um, you know, RC car, basically. This thing drives the turbo. Um, it's a fairly, you know, small, lightweight turbo. As you can see, there's no, you know, no funkiness here going on. Now these, you basically can't really buy anymore. They were originally designed for the Miata and the Subaru BRZ, and also the Scion FRS as well. Um, you know, one guy was making them, and unlike a lot of the sort of, you know, eBay um, electric supercharger things that have been sold for a while, which were all basically a scam, they either ran on a 12-volt battery, um, used basically bilge pumps, or just regular 12-volt fans, which did nothing but essentially just restrict the airflow to your car. This uses an actual compressor, um, it's driven by a really fast, powerful motor, and is driven off of a 24 volt battery pack in its default configuration. Um, it comes with a couple of other things. It comes with the battery controller and basically it's a battery management system all in one. Um, it also comes with the actual connectors which go to the batteries and also simultaneously connect back to the motor so you can see the um, cable right here. And then last but not least in the original versions which this one is a 1.5 it also came with a little switch which you basically mount um, underneath your throttle pedal that way when you hit watt basically you end up pushing the switch which activates the ESC in turn. Now something else to keep in mind is that this system um, obviously does not produce a ton of boost. What it does do however is give you instant boost so unlike a lot of systems out there you know that you can get even smaller turbos which take a while to actually get spooled up. This spool is pretty much instantaneously, again, driven by a 24 volt battery system in its default form. Now, the nice thing about this sort of setup is that, you know, if you're fairly savvy, you can actually get this motor to run with a much bigger battery pack and not necessarily lead acid batteries like what this thing comes with, which is a huge boon because obviously, you know, if you're able to give it more power, you're able to get you know a higher RPM on the compressor itself which means bigger boost so about four or five PSI with this system as it is and of course by default it was designed to only work at wide open throttle so that means that you know any time in between that it's not spooling and essentially it is a bit of a restriction in the intake but folks have actually come up with a you know separate controller for it essentially sort of like a boost controller um, using the Proceed controllers, which were originally sold from BMWs and such. Um, now you have a number of maps that you can actually download for the Proceed controllers, which allow you to actually run this thing um, essentially you know, throughout the power band. And you can change you know, depending on what RPM or throttle position um, you know, when this thing activates, which means that you can have a very progressive map where the more the, you, know, you apply the throttle, the more this thing actually spools which is of course really nice or you can just let it basically go full power you know at a certain throttle position like say you're at 70 percent throttle this thing will give full power if you apply the correct map and that was sort of the second you know iteration of this um, turbo um, because it basically made this thing work full time unlike the stock version where it would only trigger at full throttle and then it would dump everything right then and there and then it would take about you know a couple of minutes to recharge and so that's kind of the way that this thing worked. Now, this system in particular is actually no longer sold, but they do have a number of, you know, potentially competitors. Um, one of them is eTurbo.io. Um, they haven't released their product yet. They're still in the R&D stages. The other one is Arc Superchargers, which are also, you know, again, like the Phantom. Um, the idea is fairly straightforward. They have this thing. Um, they're still developing it. But the difference between those systems and this one is that they've primarily moved on to lithium ion and also lithium polymer batteries which is a huge you know huge step up um, from the lead acid system used in here um, obviously you know they're able to provide you know a higher pressure and they're able to run for significantly longer 
or um, in the case of something like the TorCamp, which is yet another competitor which actually does have a product out right now, the TorCamp is a 3800 USD system, so it's very expensive. Um, compared to the Phantom when it came out, which was about you know 1800 to maybe about two grand, uh, depending on the kit that you purchased, that's a fairly tall order, considering that the only real major advantage it has on the Phantom is again the batteries and the fact that it's able to get about seven psi at its maximum, um, which you know is a big difference, of course, because it's three psi. But again, you know, you're looking at things like you know potentially needing an intercooler at that point because again the higher pressure potentially has hotter air going into the engine as the air gets compressed. But the other problem, of course, is just simply the cost. You know, the cost of those systems, you know, currently is unannounced for two of them and for the tour camp um, that one's quite expensive now I do actually have the version 2 of this kit on the way and once I get that I'll also do a comparison video but really the the major changes with that system were primarily the fact that the actual wheel um, the compressor wheel inside of the turbo itself has gotten lighter in the new version and the other difference is that the controller now um, also allows for better heat dissipation. This one didn't really do too well over time. It tended to heat up quite significantly really quickly. Um, and the other um, improvement to the controller in version 2 was basically that they were actually able to have a progressive throttle switch. So instead of having something like this where it's really just on-off, um, you know, you were able to have sort of stages to the switch which made it very similar um, to the, you know, to the Proceed controller maps um, in the sense that it was pretty much, you know, sort of like 90% there in terms of what you were able to do. They probably used a potentiometer to, you know, can sort of control um, how far it actually goes. So really, you know, really nice setup actually, all things considered. It, you know, it does work extremely well. Now, don't take my word for it. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you guys this system running in this video in particular. Um, and I'll also be selling this particular kit for um, 1700 for those that are interested. So I'll actually have a link in the video description um, for this thing going on sale. Um, now once I do get the second kit, I'll sort of compare the electronics, the sort of layout, and show you guys the difference in the wheel sizes between the two. So look out for that. Um, look out for more videos on this. This will be going into my Sentra 2.0.